Hi everyone, welcome to another video on how to do analyses in R. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on a two-way analysis of variance, or really a multi-way analysis of variance, because you could have more than two uh, factorial variables that you want to put into your model. Uh, as always with these how-to videos, uh, we are not gonna be focusing on the statistical principles or really you know, the, the theory behind what we're doing. I assume that you know that already if you're getting to this point. Uh, if you're unclear about any of that, feel free to look at some of my other videos I'll try to link to them in the video description when it's important. Uh, similarly, we'll expect that you have some basic familiarity with R and some general data cleaning and processing functions. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with those things and you're watching this video, I have some other videos on this channel that you can check out. Um, but you know, hopefully this is really meant to serve as more of a quick refresher on just how to implement the analysis and the kind of the functions that you want to use in R. Um, and then you can have kind of a stronger theoretical foundation built from some other sources. Okay, so for the example today, as usual, we're gonna be over here in RStudio. Uh, we're gonna open the libraries that we've done before when we're dealing with an analysis of variance. Um, and then we're going to import some data. So these are some data that are on my GitHub page. Um, and actually, rather than looking at the head of these data, let's go ahead and take one second to look at the whole thing. And if we print all of the data to the screen, because this isn't too big, uh, you can see that these are the data for 18 hypothetical subjects who uh, were receiving a combination of a pharmaceutical therapy and then also psychotherapy. And then we're, you know, we've kind of made up some fictional mood scores uh, for them, uh, where uh, lower scores uh, are better. Uh, so I think this is probably, you know, like a symptom count uh, to kind of reflect maybe a depressive scale or something like that. Um, but the, the main things are is that these are individual people who are assigned to a, a drug and they get either drug A, drug B, or a placebo. And they're also assigned to a psychotherapy condition, treatment or control. So these are independent people in each of these different groups. And we have three drug groups crossed with two psychotherapy conditions. Uh, so we ultimately have kind of six groups here, right? You're getting psychotherapy and drug A, psychotherapy and drug B, psychotherapy and placebo, or the comparable combinations with control. So one of the first things that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna create a uh, variable name that is sub ID, and I'm just gonna take the row names and turn those into subject IDs, because when you're using the EZ package and the EZ ANOVA function, you actually need a column that is your subject identifier. So these data kind of implicitly told us who was who by having different subjects data on different rows, but we want to explicitly code who is who by having a, a subject identifier in the data. As always, I'm gonna show you how to do this using both the linear model um, and using Easy ANOVA. But I wanna focus on the linear model first for two reasons. One is because everything is a linear model, right? Everything is the general linear model. Uh, you, regardless of if you've learned factorial ANOVA separately from regression in an introductory stats class, factorial ANOVA is really just a special case of a linear regression. So what we're going to be doing is building our model where we're looking at mood as a function of drug and psychotherapy. Uh, and if I use this little asterisk here in R, that's gonna tell R that I want the fully factorial design. So it's going to include the main effect of drug, the main effect of psychotherapy, uh, and the interaction of those two terms. Now, when I uh, run this, I'm gonna use the little a ANOVA function first, uh, and the little a ANOVA is a base R function. And then we're gonna contrast that with the capital A ANOVA uh, from the car package. And car is short for the companion for applied regression. But let's look at the little a ANOVA functions output first. You can see uh, that we've got a, a, an effective drug with a, an F value of 54 and a pretty small P value an effect of psychotherapy with a, a, an F value of 108 and a pretty small p-value, um, and then a psychotherapy dr by drug interaction um, with, with an F value of 6.84 and a p-value of 0 0.01. So all of these would be statistically significant if we had set our alpha level to 0.05, um, but let's contrast that with what we get from the capital A ANOVA function. Well, Everything is statistically significant still, but we're actually getting very different sums of squared errors, um, and we're getting very different uh, F values for these things, because obviously the sums of squared errors go into the F value. For instance, for the effective drug, that used to be uh, 54.36. Now with the capital A ANOVA function, it's 20.16. For psychotherapy, uh, it used to be uh, 108, 
now it's 81.00. So clearly this isn't very desirable because we're getting different results here. So what's going on? Well, let's take a look at the summary output from the linear model as a way of helping us understand what's happening here. You'll notice that in the output for our linear model, we've got our intercept, and then we have a series of regression slopes. So we have drug, drug B, drug placebo, psychotherapy treatment, and then drug B, psychotherapy treatment, and placebo, psychotherapy treatment. And the reason why these things look the way they do is because R has treatment coded both of our factorial variables by default. And as a reminder, treatment coding, right, sets a reference group equal to zero across all codes. You can see some of my previous videos on treatment coding versus contrast coding. But this is gonna have a significant influence on our ANOVA results. And we have to be very careful about what type of code we are using uh, and then what type of sum of squares we are using when we're actually going in to try and interpret what's happening here. So let's look at this output to start with. This intercept of 17 is when all other codes are zero, right? Because the intercept is the predicted value of y when x is zero. So 17 is the reference group uh, across all of our codes. So that would be the mean of drug A, which is the reference group for the drug, um, and uh, no psychotherapy, which is the reference group uh, for the psychotherapy condition. And if we want to double check what those contrasts actually are, we can use the contrast function. And you can see that by default, drug as a three factor with three levels is being treatment coded with drug A um, as the reference. If instead I wanted to use polynomial contrasts so that zero is not a single group, but zero is on average across groups, I can change the contrast using the code on line 25 to say contrast poly with three levels. And now I can look at the new contrast and you can see I have a linear contrast in the first column and a quadratic contrast in the second column. And the key factor across all these polynomial contrasts right, is that zero is no longer any one group. It is on average across all of the groups. We can do the same thing with psychotherapy. It starts off as a binary 0, 1 for treatment versus control. I can change that polynomial contrast uh, to, to be, or sorry, I can change that to be a polynomial contrast for two levels. And if I look at those contrasts, uh, you can see now I just get a linear contrast because if I have only two levels, I only need one contrast to capture both of those mean differences. Um, but again, zero is on average between the two groups. So now having contrast coded both sets of variables, I will now actually get main effects and interactions like I would normally expect in a factorial ANOVA because no longer is zero going to be drug A for the drug variable and zero going to be control for the psychotherapy variable. Instead, when drug equals zero, that's on average across all drugs. So I can evaluate the main effect of psychotherapy. And when psychotherapy equals zero, um, that will be uh, on average across treatment and control conditions so I can evaluate the main effect of drug. And now when I have changed my coding scheme, you can see that in my ANOVA results here with my type three sums of squared errors, I get an F of 54.36, an F of 108, uh, and an F of 6.84. If I want to evaluate my results in the capital A ANOVA function now, keeping my type three sums of squared errors, you can see I get the same values. I get 54.36, 108, uh, and 6.84. So now by changing my coding scheme, I get results that agree between the little a ANOVA function uh, and the capital A ANOVA function where I'm specifying type three sums of squared errors. You'll also see that I get a very different set of results now uh, for my coefficients uh, because now 20 is on average across all groups. It's no longer the mean in a single group. And then I could plug in the individual contrast codes to figure out exactly what the mean is in each group. But when you use contrast coding, it's gonna be a little bit harder to interpret these coefficients, but it's going to be easier to interpret things in your ANOVA table. Uh, so I would usually recommend going with contrast coding uh, in part because that also helps reduce collinearity between your predictors. So for instance, even though we had a balanced data set, um, when we had, um, treatment coded predictors, if I look at the variance inflation factor for those uh, factors, you can see that I'm getting variance inflation factors of 1.4 to 1.7 to 1.68. 
So that's not ideal, but the reason why I'm getting that variance inflation is that I have an interaction in my model. And interactions are always going to complicate your interpretation of the lower level effects, especially when they're treatment coded. Because for one thing, right, it changes what the reference value of zero means. And for another thing, now when I'm multiplying that drug by psychotherapy, those drug by psychotherapy factors together, I'm going to introduce some collinearity because there's always going to be a reference group anchoring all of that at zero. In contrast, if I look at the variance inflation factors when I've contrast coded my data, there's no variance inflation at all. And that's because, again, these groups are perfectly balanced. And by having orthogonal contrast codes, now there's going to be no collinearity between my predictors. So I would always encourage you to use orthogonal contrast codes whenever you can. And you can see some of my other videos on contrast coding versus treatment coding. Um, but I think it is very useful, especially when you're going to have interactions in your model, to have contrast coded predictors. That is going to make your interpretation of the linear model a little bit more difficult in some situations. So you might try to look at it both ways and you could present you know, the F tests from one or the coefficients from another. Um, but if we're dealing with a strictly factorial design, you might not use the linear modeling function at all. And you might instead want to use a function like EZ ANOVA from the EZ package. Same, similar to how we've used this function before, right? we can tell it what data we're using. We want to look at mood scores as our dependent variable. Subject ID is our, our grouping variable. Uh, and then now we actually have two between subject factors. So we're going to use a dot. And then in parentheses, we're going to say drug, comma, psychotherapy. And then we're going to specify that we want type 3 sums of squares. And we'll get the, uh, the output like we've generally seen before, where it gives us the main effect of drug, the main effect of psychotherapy, and the drug by psych psychotherapy interaction. Two nice features of the Easy ANOVA package are that in this output, we also get a generalized effect size. Um, and you can look at the Easy ANOVA documentation for exactly how to interpret that. Conceptually, it is similar to a partial eta squared that you might have calculated in some other courses uh, or in previous work with ANOVA. Um, it's a little bit different though. So yeah, I would encourage you to look at their documentation for what this GES is. Um, and then we also have Levine's test for homogeneity of variance. So across our six groups, and hence five degrees of freedom in the numerator, uh, we have a pretty small F value and a pretty large P value. So there's no uh, statistically significant violation of uh, homogeneity here. And we're safe to assume that we have roughly equal variances across all of our groups. We can see that a little more clearly when we actually get into plotting our data. Uh, so one way to do that would be to use a uh, geome box plot inside of a uh, ggplot. Uh, and you can see now we've got the combination of our different factors. Um, oh, and it looks like I didn't actually put a legend on this. So let me edit the legend position argument to put a legend on the bottom. So you can see red are our controls and blue is our treatments. Oh, and actually, I think I described this variable the wrong way around before. I think I was saying that lower was better. In looking at this, I think higher is actually better. It's made up data, so it doesn't actually matter. But uh, assuming that I, you know, we, we got an example where they, they wanted this to show that treatment was good, which I assume they did, it looks like higher scores are actually better. So we have a main effect of treatment, right? On average across these groups, we see a treatment effect. Uh, where, where you're better than the controls. We also see an effect of drug, right? So on average across treatments, there seem to be differences between the drug groups and the placebo, but all those things are superseded by the drug by uh, psychotherapy interaction, suggesting that the effectiveness of our drug depends on whether or not a person is receiving psychotherapy. And to fully unpack that interaction, we'd have to go through some, uh, some number of post hoc tests in order to understand exactly which groups are different from which other groups. And that's a little bit outside of the scope of this how-to video. So I'll put a link in the video description to my other videos on strategies for conducting post hoc tests. As a final visualization though, although I like these box plots and being able to see these individual data points, this shows medians, which doesn't actually correspond to what our statistical test is about, right? If we're using the general linear model and the sum of squared errors as our estimator, the mean is actually a better representation of what we're doing. So I'm going to do a little bit of number crunching to get a data set where I have the mean, the standard deviation, right? And then the lower and upper 95% confidence limits in both groups. Uh, and then in ggplot, I can use that aggregated data to actually draw a nice plot like this, where I show the mean in each group and then the 95% confidence limits 
inside of each of those groups. So this is getting a little bit closer to what our statistical model is actually testing because we're looking at the difference between means. Um, now, whether you like 95% confidence intervals uh, to, to actually show kind of the statistical inference, or maybe you like drawing standard deviations just to show the spread of the data, you know, that's kind of up to you. But I think a uh, visualization like this is really helpful for your readers to then understand what it is that you are trying to do with your two-way factorial ANOVA in this example.